Ms. Raza, you're up for five minutes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I begin in the name of God, most beneficent, most merciful. Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to deliver this testimony. My name is Raheel Raza. I'm a practicing Muslim, president of Muslims Facing Tomorrow, founding member of the Muslim Reform Movement and advisory board member of the Clarion Project. I've engaged in dialogue about these issues in the U.S., at the U.N., and in the Canadian and U.K. parliaments for over two decades. I have four main recommendations. Number one, shift government focus and efforts to tackle the Islamist ideology. Number two, designate the Muslim Brotherhood as an entity that aids and abets terrorism. Number three, prevent funding of U.S. educational institutions and mosques by foreign extremist sources. And number four, invite, invite voices of reform-minded Muslims to also be heard in these esteemed chambers. Firstly, there is a serious error at the heart of the countering violent extremism policy. We must confront radicals before they become violent. Before World War II, Nazism was an ideology expressed in Mein Kampf. Before two million Chinese died in the Cultural Revolution, ideas were written down in a little red book. And in 1928, another ideology appeared with the founding of the Muslim Brotherhood, which seeks a totalitarian system of government and forced implementation of Sharia law, the trickling effects of which we don't want to see in the United States. This ideology fuels ISIS and Al-Qaeda, subjugates women, executes homosexuals, kills Christians, and inspires some American Muslims to commit acts of terror. The Clarion Project's short film, By the Numbers, puts numbers to these assertions based on Pew Research. 27% or 237 million Muslims believe non-believers should be executed. And 26% of young American Muslims believe suicide bombings against non-Muslims can be justified. Fortunately, most Muslims don't hold this radical ideology, but hundreds of millions do. Some claim ideology is not a clear predictor of terrorism. They are dead wrong. A 2016 study traced the path of 100 violent jihadists. 51% of them began their journey in non-violent Islamist movements. By the time an extremist becomes violent, it's too late. As such, the U.S. must defeat, humiliate, destroy and discredit this poisonous radical ideology of Islamism stemming from the Wahhabi Salafi ideology, Khomeinism and the Muslim Brotherhood. Which brings me to recommendation number two, designate the Muslim Brotherhood as an organization that aids and abets terrorism. As I've already explained, the Muslim Brotherhood seeks to establish a worldwide Islamic state and build a new world civilization based on Sharia law. In fact, Russia, Syria, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, and the United Arab Emirates have all listed the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization. The U.S. must follow suit. Next, number three, remove foreign extremist funding from American campuses and mosques. Saudi Arabia is thought to have spent 70 to 100 billion dollars to disseminate the intolerant version of Islam worldwide. Saudi Arabia gave $20 million to Georgetown and $20 million to Harvard. A Saudi billionaire named as a defendant in a 9-11 lawsuit donated $10 million to establish a center of Islamic law and civilization at Yale. Iran is also complicit in funding Shia mosques, Islamic schools, and organizations. We should not have Iran or Saudi Arabia teaching their version of Islam to our youth. Final recommendation number four. A seat at the table listened to moderate Muslims. Muhammad Ali Bayari helped craft the Countering Violent Extremism, the CVE program, yet he called for the political integration of mainstream Islamists like the Muslim Brotherhood. Also, CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, is a radical group which claims to speak for American Muslims. CARE does not speak for me or most Muslims. CARE was designated as a terrorist group by the United Arab Emirates, and its LA director called the work of this committee a myth. CARE's recommendation to the House Committee on Homeland Security was to refuse a legitimizing platform to organizations and individuals they deem Islamophobic. 
Let me clarify that anti-Muslim bigotry is real, but that's not a permission slip to call every dissenting voice an Islamophobe. I've raised two sons with Muslim values while keeping them from radical views and will do the same for my four grandchildren. Does educating youth about the dangers of radicalization make one an Islamophobe? Of course not. These labels keep us from critical debate such as the one we are having now and stops the Muslim communities from becoming pluralistic, tolerant, embracing of democracy, freedoms and liberties and accepting of all parts and people. On behalf of Muslims Facing Tomorrow, reform-minded Muslims in the Clarion Project, thank you for letting our voices be heard.